First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. This is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. As always, we appreciate you joining us. We are live streaming at kptv.com under the Fox 12 Now tab and our live stream that's generally on there. And we're also, of course, on all of the Fox 12 Oregon apps. So whatever device you have, you can download that. Watch this show live and watch it afterward as well. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Right now, we are talking about your vehicles. If you have any kind of a newer vehicle, it's most likely connected in some way, shape, or form uh, via online, some, some fashion like that. And uh, a recent story came out about some Subarus that were found that they could be hacked. Now, I believe this problem has been fixed, but it's something that you should be aware of, and particularly here in the Northwest, there's a lot of Subaru owners. And uh, generally speaking, though, all cars that are connected, there's some things that you should watch out for. And to talk all about this right now, we've got Tony Sabai from Checkpoint. And uh, Tony, thanks for, for joining us here. I kind of hit a few different points there in that intro, so to narrow that back down a little bit, um, would you mind, if you could just tell us a little bit about this recent story about Subarus and what happened there. Yeah, so, uh, you know, late last year, uh, there was a gentleman uh, named Sam Curry, uh, and his mother bought a Subaru, and uh, he told his mother, hey, I want to try and hack your Subaru because it's connected by what's called Subaru Starlink, no relation to SpaceX Elon Musk Starlink, but that's the name of their their connected car platform. And initially what this gentleman did is he tried to hack the, the app that comes with it and actually had no success. The app itself was, was fairly secure. And he started digging deeper into it and saw some links to like an admin portal that isn't supposed to be used by, by users. This is supposed to be used by admins of the, uh, of, of the system. So he went to that admin portal and funny enough, he went on LinkedIn and searched for Subaru Starlink developers found an email address, was able to get that email address, and then use the forgot password link within this admin portal that shouldn't even be available to the general public, and was able to reset the user's password by tricking the sort of two-factor authentication because it was being done on the browser and not on the server side, and was able to get admin access to the, you know, as if he was an employee. And wow. what he found was he had the ability to add himself to any Subaru user account in Canada, Japan, and the United States uh, without the user being aware of it. So he actually added himself to his mom's account and was able to unlock and lock the car, um, manipulate the remote start, so stop and start the car, and kind of, you know, from a, a privacy information, was able to see every location that his mother has been in the past year, which is being stored within their systems. And then even called a friend of his that lives in a different state and said, hey, I'm going to hack your car. And he was able to, you know, unlock and lock their car while the, you know, while their friend was on the phone. So what this really goes to show is a couple things is, you know, connected cars present a, you know, a security and a privacy issue. And um, even though there really wasn't anything that a Subaru owner could do to protect themselves against this, um, it had to be fixed by Subaru. Now, uh, in in this case, it was a good guy that found the hack, and he uh, uh, reported it to Subaru. They fixed the problem before it was publicized. So uh, as far as Subaru is concerned, nobody besides this gentleman exploited it. Um, but there's really nothing that the average user could do in this particular case other than constantly monitor what users are in their account, even though they weren't notified of it. So this really goes to show that when you have a connected car, not only are you giving up some privacy, and, and in this case, Subaru is keeping your, you know, location data for a year, um, that uh, you are vulnerable to these types of, of, of attack. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely concerning because you, you got to think that maybe some other car services too, you know, Subaru Starlink being the one that was found because the guy's mom had the Subaru, so that's what he was trying on. But you, you would think that that could be possible elsewhere mm -hmm. as well. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of unnerving. Just to know that that's that's something you could do, and luckily that that guy was you know a white hat hack, hacker. But um, for the general, uh, going beyond that, you know, with connected vehicles, what are some things that people can do that's within their power with their connected vehicles to try to make sure that they they're staying safe? Yeah, and it, as this becomes more and more common, connected vehicles, whether it's for enabling services or it's connected navigation type stuff, uh, any of that. Uh, internet connected vehicles, I think people should really, you know, 
they can opt out of the service altogether if they're you know kind of that paranoid i i purposely don't drive a connected car for this exact reason um but you know also make sure they have things like two-factor authentication turned on in the app itself to make sure that there's some sort of secondary authentication monitor who has access to their account this guy was able to add himself to he didn't do it to anybody but his mother and his friend but he did have the ability to add himself to almost anybody in the world driving a subaru and they wouldn't have known unless they went into their account and actually looked to see who is an authorized user so look and see who's authorized um and you know most of us don't do this but read the privacy policy in terms of you know usage when you sign up for these types of services to see what information the manufacturer in this case subaru is collecting on you and you have the ability to opt out of it you may lose some of those connected car services but you have the ability to opt out um in general i mean what are some other important things that people should know just about connected vehicles because i feel like any newer vehicle is probably going to be connected in some way shape or form unless you opt out of it uh, are there some general tips and tricks that people can do i mean you gave us a few right there but anything else that you think is important yeah i mean you know just general you know chances are most of these apps are running on your mobile phone um so you know obviously there's there's mobile phone security of you know having you know a password or a passcode not not allowing your phone to stay unlocked for an hour because anybody could just pick up your phone and start messing with your car if you're in a restaurant or a coffee shop and they could you know, essentially steal your car from the app. So just general mobile security um, uh, best practices. So again, making sure you have two factor on the actual apps themselves, making sure you have proper authentication on the phone, on your iPhone or your Android or, or whatever platform you happen to be using and make sure that you don't, you know, leave your phone unlocked. But a lot of this is really up to the security of, of, of the manufacturer in this case. And there's not a whole lot that the individual end user can do to protect themselves. Um, you're, you're really relying on the, the car manufacturer, the service manufacturer to have their affairs in order. So something like uh, this Subaru Starlink ha hack couldn't happen. Is this something that you've seen from maybe some of the auto manufacturers as far as beefing up their security and trying to plug some of these vulnerability holes that they have, like this one that Subaru had? Yeah, so this, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, there was the uh, case with the Jeeps where it was actually a little bit more severe than this. It was actually like hacking the actual internet connection that was going to the Jeep itself. And they were able to almost control the car, uh, you know, remotely. So it was actually a little bit more serious than this one. Um, but you're, we're, we're seeing more and more of this. And this is really with any kind of cloud-based service that you're you're relying on the security of the manufacturer and most of the car companies have have taken this security very very seriously this was a very um it was an interesting hack and, and subaru responded very very quickly i mean it took them you know less than half a day to fix the issue so uh it, it was not out there and known for that long but it just these companies need to stay vigilant and and do the proper testing and you know constant scanning of their environments so they can try and stay ahead of you know the, the hackers and in this case it was a you know it was a curious good guy and not a uh, a bad person that was you know trying to steal cars or rob cars yeah thankfully it was this guy who was who was doing that like you said i mean but the the way we see more and more you know autonomy with vehicles and more of those mm -hmm. capabilities in there i mean that's certainly something that's scary and i feel like a lot of people do have that concern of you know well yeah, somebody just go in and hack my car and and drive away and as we get into more self-driving cars you know this becomes you know a you know, uh, you know, not just a personal, you know, safety, but a public safety issue of if someone can control internet connected cars that are using, you know, real time services to help drive the car, then they can actually cause, you know, real, you know, mayhem by, by controlling cars. Like some of the, you know, scenes you've seen in the movies where, you know, hackers hack yeah. cars and they drive all over the place. Uh, not that that's going to happen in mass, but, um, you could actually cause, you know, serious damage and bodily harm by hacking some of these cars now as we get into the more of the autonomous and self-driving vehicles. And ultimately, as you mentioned, so the real protection there comes from the manufacturers themselves. Is that probably exactly? Yeah, it's yeah. it's really up yeah. to them to to keep their systems in order. Well, hopefully, hopefully they are doing that. Uh, well, Tony, thank you very much. Anything else that you think is important for people to know? Yeah, I, I just think, yeah, you know, this brings the light, you know, not only a security issue, but also the privacy issue of it. You know, why does Subaru need to know every location and if someone can hack that 
you could have stalkers. You could find out where they're going. Um, you know, they, they say they need it for emergency response. You know, if a car gets into a crash, they can automatically call 911, but they probably don't need to be saving a year's worth of data in order to call 911. They probably only need a day or so. So look at the privacy issues and, and look at what data, uh, you know, these manufacturers are, are keeping on your, on your vehicle and your personal information. So read through those things when it asks you to just sign this this user agreement. Yeah. None of us do. We all click accept. But you know, yeah. in this case, this is probably something to look at of what what data they're actually collecting on you and make sure you're okay with it. Yeah, I've got to get a, in a better habit of that myself. So this is a good reminder of that. Well, Tony, thank you so much. I always appreciate you joining here and, uh, and sharing this information and getting this out there for people. And you know, with this kind of stuff, it's always going to be ever changing and important to stay on top of it for everybody. So thanks for doing that for us. No problem, Greg. All right, and for everybody watching, this is Fox 12 Now. We are live streaming here out of the Fox 12 Oregon Newsroom. If it's your first time watching, thanks. You can check out all of our segments on those aforementioned Fox 12 Oregon apps. So you can grab those on whatever device you're on. You can scroll through. You can find all of our segments and a lot of other things, too, of course, here from Fox 12 Oregon. But I will be back here throughout the afternoon. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.